Hello everybody, welcome back. My name's Velocity Gaming, and this is something very new for me. This is actually a live commentary, which is going to be interesting. <laughs> yeah, dear. Uh, so today, just going to play some Rome Total War, the original Rome, probably one of my favourite games of all time. Just a sort of introduction, more for me than anyone else, to live commentaries. So we're just going to play the game, play through it a bit of a campaign. I'm playing as Mastodon today, which is quite funny because I'm also playing a Mastodon campaign on uh, Rome 2 as well. And as someone who likes Rome 2, despite all its problems and all the issues surrounding it, it's great to come back to Rome 2. It's seriously wonderful. It's still a fantastic strategy game, a revolutionary game in this genre, and it's just still one of my favourite games of all time. So just doing my usual send my diplomats out, get some trade, get some allies as quick as possible. I'd say I'm quite a defensive player when I play Total War games. I'm a bit cautious a bit. I like to think things through carefully, make sure I'm not rushing into anything head first and I like to make sure, as I'm going to do now, all my cities are uh, sorted out and fixed up properly and yeah, just going to play through it. I've already realised I made a mistake and didn't set I could control all cities. Ah dear, that's gonna it's going great so far, isn't it guys? So just gonna build very important to build a wall in Apollonia, because you've got the Romans right across there and they're not exactly friendly. So just gonna build a wall there. Get some in fact, just gonna build some walls everywhere just to make sure we're nice and safe and cozy. And there oh we can already upgrade that city up. Very important to do that as soon as possible, or people will start to complain. Change that to a cultural build policy. And then let's have a look at our armies. So we've got decent sized garrison here with some hoplites and a couple of peltasts. I'm actually going to move these guys across there for now. That's almost a holding force. And then this guy is going to prepare to attack down into Greece because although they're my allies I want to control all of this area here, have a nice sort of almost like a little base down here which I can defend easily and uh, after that push north hopefully take out Thrace because they can be a bit of a troublemaker and then see where we go from there so just going to start gathering an army up to attack Greece move these guys down they're not really needed up there and move from some some from Thessalonica or Thessalonica, however you want to say it. Move them down. And this should be a decent sized army. Not many archers, more cavalry based, but I'm sure we can manage with that. Also realise where's my where's my general gone? Oh he's there. Okay, that's fine. There we go. Always important to go in with the general just in case you need to hire some mercenaries. Just have a quick look at the uh, finances. Yep, not going too badly, considering I'm building quite a lot. Look at the family tree as well. There it is. So, faction leader, he'll probably be on his way soon. He's, over, he's 50 years old at the moment, they don't live that long. So my faction heir, and they've got two other generals, three other generals in fact. It's a good starting amount. So let's go to the next turn and see what happens. Uh, I did forget to mention this, this is actually running the uh, Darth mod. Uh, oops, GG. The uh, Darth mod. So um, you'll notice some differences. It makes it a lot better, makes it a lot more of a challenge as well. The AI are a lot smarter, especially in battles. And I just, I kind of like that extra challenge as someone, again, who's played a lot of this game. It's nice to sort of mix it up a bit. So as you can see, they're sending their spy to check out what I'm doing so I'm gonna see what they have down here they don't have a huge army so I'd probably be moving in quickly before they can uh, build up and while I'm doing that although I said I was going to attack them for now I'm going to try and uh, ally with Thrace for a bit just to make sure they don't come down and take uh, these cities in the north while I'm focusing on Greece I'd, I like to fight one war at a time I don't like to be spreading armies out all over the place. I like to have focused attacks on one region, which is what I'm going for here. 
So if I can take Athens and Corinth and Sparta, I think Sparta's down there somewhere, then that'd be really good. It'd give me a nice sort of basic area to defend. So even if I do get attacked by Rome and by Thrace and by whoever else, I've got these three cities here, which I can easily defend. Ready. I'm also going to bring my... No, I'll leave my navy there for now, actually, and just see whether I need it later on. Yes, I'm going to see if I can hire any... No, I can only hire some Thracians, which aren't really worth it. So let's see what else we can build now. Uh, probably important to get some shrines, just to make sure the people are happy. And they all have, as you can see, they all have different bonuses. So that's only 5% happiness. That upgrades missile weapons, which is really useful. And then public order, which is also very useful. So I'm going to go with the shrine to Artemis, because that would be quite a nice place to hire some troops and build it up so I can move into Rome eventually. So, Temple of Artemis. Here, I will let them finish the wall actually first. See if I can. Is there anywhere not building? Nope. You can obviously queue buildings, but I like to make sure I've got one one at a time. I'm actually going to increase the tax rate a bit because everyone seems relatively happy. Oh, except them. No point hiring anything. And then up there as well, just to get some extra income. Hopefully support this army and yep move on to the next turn again oh Thrace are already wanting to uh, be friends with me that's nice so we'll accept that and see if we can get an alliance with them for now nope obviously they don't want that that's always a bit worrying it usually means they're about to come and attack you soon Yep, stuff's getting built. It's looking alright at the moment. So, just seeing if I need any more troops before I march into Greece. Uh, what have I got there? I've got Macedonian cavalry. I could do with some archers, that's the only thing that's worrying me at the moment. I like to have a nice selection of archers, so I'll bring this guy out. See if I can recruit any more. No. But, that'll have to do for now. In we go can hire some Peltas, which I'm going to do, just to give me that little bit of support when I'm in battle, especially as they've got a lot of hoplites. Move this guy into there, and then get building some more things. So, that's finished. Built. Larissa should have finished, yep. So, again, I'm going to focus on shrines at the moment to make sure my people are happy while the uh, cities are ungarrisoned as they're attacking. Uh, I'm going to build actually a shrine to Artemis there as well. And queue a wooden wall there. Anyway, I said I won't queue buildings, but I want a wall there desperately. And then. Actually, going to go across, see if I can get across to Pontus there. Although I don't think I can. But I thought there was a passage there just to get some, get some trade going towards the east there. Which would be very nice good source of income. Uh, I'm gonna quickly get some militia hop. Okay, I can't get any there because it's there's no governor there. Everyone else, yeah, everyone else is governed. Uh, yep, yeah, get one in every city I can. Just to make sure I'm extra safe. There we go. It'll cost a bit of money, but if we're capturing these cities, we should have plenty of income in a bit. Oh, and Dacia, Dacia making an offer I can't refuse, so I'll go with that. Not going to bother relying with them, they're too far north to really bother me at the moment. And he's just, yep, yeah, just re 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 reinforced Trigon Jacob, well done. So I'm going to put him in there. Got some decent hot plights. But I don't think they're as good as my phalanx. Oh, okay, they're actually better. Oh dear, this is going to go well. Although we have more... No. Okay. Oh dear. <laughs> uh, but I've got some cavalry which should come in handy. I'm actually going to hire a bit more. I know I'm spending a lot of money here, but... If I'm going up against Hopter Days, I want uh, plenty of cavalry to sneak up behind on the flanks. So... 
Yes. Besiege that. Maintain the siege. Oh. What's he doing there? What are you doing? Hey! Nah, get out of here. Not your kind in here. Right, I'm not going to hire any more mercenaries. Um, I think that's about all I can do really with that. Can't really... I guess I could try and run some more cavalry in. Yeah, let's do that. As I said, fighting Hoplites and Peltast uh, cavalry is always useful. Especially if you're coming at them with just pikemen. So, we'll see how that goes in the end. See if he can... Yes, have they removed... Yep, okay, I'm going to have to go all the way around if I want to get there. There used to be a little passage through, I think. So, I'm send him as far north as I can. There we go. Um, I wish I could see what Rome was doing, because... I'm tempted to try and... It would be good to try and sort of cut them off as soon as possible. If I can get one of their factions down, like... I can't remember the uh, name of who's in the south, but if you can get sort of one faction down and reduce the rest to one city, then Rome aren't really a threat. If you let them expand, then that's where the danger comes. But we'll deal with that when when it happens. So that'll take eight turns. I'll probably attack before that, but I just want to reduce their numbers a bit. I don't think they've got really a huge reinforcing army to come yes, and sandwich me there. So move on again. And they didn't, okay. They're not sending anything to try and sort of push me away, which is always good. And we've got another general. That's very useful. He can now go into Thurman, and now I can choose what they're building. Oh, they definitely need some roads. Roads are very important. That's one of your main sources of income. So as you can see, as a... As a uh, Army's garrison, they slowly lose soldiers over time. Especially if you wait all all eight turns, then basically they'll have hardly anything and it's a little bit easier. Uh in Rome two is a difference in Rome two. On this, your soldiers don't take casualties, so you can besiege them for as long as you want. Also that is a lot of cavalry. Two hundred and sixteen cavalry, I can't wait for that. But that's for another time. So just keep sieging that, keep making sure everyone's happy. Keep trying to send my diplomat further north. Okay, that's really worrying me, that they've put him right there. Um, and I've even got a wall there. Oh dear. Quickly try and hire some hoplites. See if I can... Can't run any cavalry up. Hopefully they don't attack me, because otherwise I'm going to be very upset with them. I might have to turn my army north and bring vengeance upon them. But again, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, most of this is now waiting for them to lose enough troops that I can attack, so we'll keep ending the turn. Oh dear, there we go. So he's not attacking me with a huge reinforcing army, but obviously it means these can attack me as well. Um, I'm going to quickly save it. So I can cheat later. No, um, just in case the game crashes, because obviously it's quite an old game. You never know. And then I'm gonna first battle of a live commentary. There you go. Exciting times. If I go very quiet, it's probably because I'm concentrating. Just wait for it to load. I'm gonna try and take quite a defensive formation on this one mainly have a big pike line and then have the cavalry running around the flanks because they didn't look like they had much cavalry. A little bit laggy but I'm sure that'll... Right, start deployment. I remember the controls, don't get it wrong. So as you can see we've got a lot of pikemen. A lot of pikemen. <laughs> oh dear. Um, so I'm trying to think how to do this. We're at a disadvantage because we're downhill, which I never like. Um, probably the best thing is just to line them up as high up this hill as possible in a nice li big line like that in a pipe formation. Archers sort of stretched out as far as I can behind in a loose formation. 
get as much fire on them as I can. Literally. Put them on fire arrows because they've got armor on. Uh, Pell tests I'm going to have on this side here. And then I'm going to have uh, this mercenary cavalry behind it. Not in a wedge formation. Stop that. There you go. Just in case they get attacked, I can try and give them some support. And then we're going to have Macedonian cavalry along here to flank round. So I'm going to keep. The, I'm actually going to keep the general with the main force to give them some morale boost in case stuff goes wrong. And then I'll put the light lances with these guys as a just to get as much cavalry charging to the back as possible. Just put them into some groups. Group them. And then group my cavalry so I can easily select them. And then let's see what they're gonna do. Okay, that's that's quite an easy. I thought they might end up spawning behind me, but that's alright in this corner, and they're going to have to run all the way up this hill to get to me. They are on the flank, but I want to deal with this force first. So I'm going to start... Oh, stop, stop. Myrick, he got stuck down. GG. So I'm going to move these guys up like that. So wait for them to get a bit close. I don't want to... Obviously, anyone who's played any Total War game knows cavalry against pikemen doesn't work well at all. You can try and outmaneuver them, but I don't want to lose... I don't want to waste my cavalry on one unit. I want to get them a bit closer, get the archers firing, maybe get the peltas to finish them off. In fact, I might start running the pelt. Yeah, I'm going to run these peltas up. Take out as much as I can so I can quickly turn the army to face them, which I might start doing now. Because again, they've got to come up this huge hill. So if I line them up in a slightly tighter formation like that, then hopefully as they come up the hill they run straight into a line of pikemen. And these, these hot potatoes aren't going to like this. So get this cavalry right up behind it so he doesn't Basically, with, with pike men and stuff, you want to try and keep them almost confused. You want units in the front, units in the back, so they can't decide which to attack, and then you've always got a shot at getting them in the rear. Because that's the important thing, because they've got a lot of armor, they've got heavy shields. You want to, you really want to hit them in the flanks and in the, in the back. So these guys are going to start running in a second. I'm going to charge one unit of cavalry in. just to see how much damage I can do. In fact, two actually. Go for it. See, it, it ruins their morale getting attacked in the rear like that. Although they've just turned to face me, so I'm going to pull these guys back. Like that. And then the Peltas they're going to be throwing into the back of them. Just seeing if I'm going to be able to get there in time. I'm going to have to run these guys. It's never nice running your men when they're not in that oh I can't because they're in pipe formation anyway but so as you can see they really don't like being attacked by cavalry and infantry although they're going for my pikemen which is a bit worrying because I don't want them getting attacked before they're in position so I'm going to charge this cavalry back in and get the archers firing on them I mean it's not a problem if, oops that was a bad idea wasn't it okay there we go them. They're broken, them so the stop, stop firing! Don't fight! Don't fire! Don't fire! You're gonna kill your own men. Relax, chill, chill. There we go. So, oh, the got the enemy general. Which doesn't really matter because they were running anyway, and those are the only unit. So now I'm gonna get these wide on the flank here. Yep, so position these guys like that. For some reason they bugged out a bit went away over there. Cavalry on the flanks again, which is even better because now I've got a hill to run down. Get the archers in. Just behind them like that. Peltas are out of ammo, but they're still decent enough in melee combat, so we'll see what happens. And get this 
get this cavalry unit on that flank actually, just in case to try and get round. For some reason I can't, there we go, that's good enough. And then get everyone running into position, except the pike men, because they can't run in pike formation. The nice little tasty target there of, I think that's archers. Oh, it's peltasts, it's a nice target from the cavalry. Get a big cavalry charge down to get take out their peltast and general, while the pike men will hold these guys and then cavalry in the back, hammer and anvil tactic, I think everyone knows that by now. You use your infantry to hold them up, cavalry in the back, jobs are good and they'll break pretty quickly. And yes, the battle advisor is Darth Vader. There you go. It's very quiet though, sorry about that. And here come his general's bodyguard. They're a lot more powerful than my cavalry, but I've got a lot more numbers. Which isn't always a guarantee, I know. Don't take that advice from me for this game. It's not all about numbers, but with you know, 500 against 93, it should do a pretty decent job. And as you can see, the, the pipe men have slowed right down. They don't know whether to come and help or to keep going, and they decided to keep going. Which is good for me. It gives me more time to deal with all this. As you can see, we're losing numbers heavily from them, but now we've got the whole whole cavalry force attacking them. And we can even charge the general in if we need it. So this is all nearly in formation. We can move these guys out here. Again, just to make sure we can flank them. And then just just keep waiting really. Actually gonna angle these. So if we need to we can close around them. That's another important uh, tactic, is making sure you've got the ability to close your formation around them, almost. So it's not just line against line, because, again, I've not got I've got weaker units, so I need to use every tactic instead of just relying on brute force numbers, like I'm doing here, as you can see. If I was smart, I'd have run some cavalry around the back, instead of having them all, as you can see, they're all getting jammed up here, trying to get into it. So I'm going to try and run these guys behind them just to break up the individual units and get these guys running right into the back of them I know it's my general but a general's gotta do what a general's gotta do okay so just waiting for contact to be made that's where it's gonna hit first oh, just, oh I forgot to put them on fire at will didn't I of course I did that's costing me quite a bit, but they're still going to get some shots on. And as you can see, they're all very tired. And there's a lot of us which they're not happy about. Right, you back into, back into it. There we go. Just gives us a bit of an advantage having them charging in the back. So we've got their general running. He's going to see if we can actually kill their king. That would be a great advantage for us. Okay, not going to charge him yet. I'm gonna actually going to use these guys first. The there we go. Killed him. Away. And charge these guys back up. Move these guys back. Don't want them engaging pikemen head on. Got these guys marching into the flanks and back. Going to charge with the general first take some out and then get these pipe men to finish off the job in the rear. As you can see though, a charge to the back straight away gets them routing or gets them broken. Pull him back so he doesn't take any unnecessary casualties and then these guys are going to come in and just keep them where they are, make sure we can kill as many as we can and the city, taking the city should be a lot easier. Actually no, that's a terrible idea. Ooh. Careful, careful. Easy, Tiger. So they're just going to keep putting fire on them. As you can see, though, and as you can hear, it's just bouncing off their armour at the moment. That's the, the that's the importance of getting in behind the enemy. Put them on the weakest armour. As you can see, these guys are just running away. They've had enough. These guys are now running. 
so get the cavalry to start sweeping up what they can. So I'm gonna when this battle is finished I'm gonna continue it, make sure I can take out as many units as I can. So it's just this last unit now which I'm gonna ho I'm hoping the archers can take out. If not I can charge some cavalry in the back again. So just keep moving these guys back. Turn these guys round. The enemy show their true so I'm going to continue the battle and then Only from our men. keep charging into them. Take out as many as we can and then again as I said taking the city should be an absolutely easy job. Especially if we can destroy everyone. So that was a that was a pretty good battle considering we were against two armies. We had the we had the bigger numbers, which is always an advantage, obviously, but it doesn't guarantee anything, so happy with that, especially with my first battle back in Rome. And pretty much destroyed every enemy. I'm gonna get the archers to stop firing now so they don't kill their own men. And destroyed everything. Good job guys. Proud of you. GG. So as you can see, we outnumbered them, but hardly lost any, which is always important. And they had 22 men remaining out of both armies. Good win for Macedon there. Go on, Macedon. Go on. So, next turn, try and take the city. Or, this turn, take the city. Try and throw some spears up. Don't know how well this is going to work, but not at all. Don't think it took out one man. Um. Ah, oh, these men fell for war. I think they're all mine as well. The problem with the Macedonians and Greeks—they have very similar armor. In fact, identical. Wow.